Yeah, here we go. This one should rack up the views, brother, right? Uh, yes. All right. I don't even know what episode this will be because we got so many yeah, that we, we haven't were, posted yet. Guess what, guys? We were going to put out like two or three more episodes before this one, but we decided that uh, fuck all that shit. We're gonna record this one. The other week. ones, it was a busy, it was a slow week. Yeah, slow week. This AKA, one, we didn't get into drama. This one hit us. <laughs> yeah, this one hit us hard. This, this week kind of hit us hard. So let's just start off by talking about what everybody wants us to talk That's about. That's right. What the internet keeps talking you about. You fucking killed wrestling and cut the worst promo ever in Lost Indie Idol, allegedly. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing. <laughs> Cut the worst promo ever. You know how many fans messaged me before the judging came out and said, Oh my god, you have the best promo ever. You better fucking win. Like, and then you got this... squashed. Stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> That's your lying right there. I did not win against Mark Ross. And then I was still getting messages. I even had the other two people from... Wrestling Rage come up to me at BCWA and say, hey, bro, that promo, I, I don't care what the judges say. How the fuck did you not <laughs> win? I thought Wrestling Rage judges the promos. No, <laughs> one member of Wrestling Rage, Cody, okay. um, AVZ, okay. and Ross. I mean, uh, Johnny Delicious. Yeah, shout out Big John Delicious. Yeah, um, but anyway, that's not what I was talking about, brother. Oh, right, right. I, I forgot the other thing where you were in the fucking Battle Royal that you lost to Rachel Green. <laughs> no! <laughs> you, it is on record, Loren, er, Forever Young lost to Rachel Green. No, I did not. I lost to Triple Rach. <laughs> it's the same thing. No, it's not. Or, I'm sorry. Triple she is. H is raunchy ring rat. I mean, oh, oh. <laughs> No, wait. That wasn't me. Briar said that. Briar said that. Briar said that. Briar said that. Not me. I would like to get, I would like to get booked a horror slam <laughs> once. When I, you know, when I return, I'd like to continue to get booked. I don't want to fucking kill all my Rachel bookings Rachel likes right us. Now. Briar said that. Not all right. Me. I don't agree with any of that shit. That's all. It's a wrestling character. <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? We talk about wrestling all the time, and people fucking hate us for it. All so right. Can we get to what we actually are here to talk uh, about? Ah, yes. When you posted the worst fucking clip of all time and kill professional wrestling. So, this is actually funny, because this isn't the first time that this happened. Yeah. The very first time that I did the the TJ elbow, what's known as the TJ elbow, the very first time I did that, we got all the, damn, God, damn. We got all the comments. Oh and like, my God. It wasn't just for the elbow part, though. Because remember, we did yeah. the spot where we hit the... Yeah, Daniel Bryan can fucking do it, but God forbid we do it, you know. I guess that we're killing the business at that point. So basically, we hit the turnbuckle, right? Hit the turnbuckle and then hit, like, how do I explain this? So he hit the turnbuckle and then I hit him with a corner euro. And then I hit the turnbuckle again and then he hit me with something. The forearm. Yeah. And then, you know, something you see in, like, every fucking AEW match. So, I mean. But, so, like, that spot got a lot of controversy and then the elbow got a lot of controversy. So. It's funny that we did a, well, I posted an elbow this time, and it happened again. In 12 hours, I woke up, 12 hours, and it had like 1,900 right. views. It's a lot of comments. I don't know how many it had. Oh, I brother, I can, uh, hopefully I can tell you. Can we talk about it first? Oh, yeah, okay, God, so what right, happened Let's was, talk about it. I set Hannah up for the TJ elbow, <laughs> and I screamed out, TJ Elbow! <laughs> Ain't shit for that, by the way. Not shit. And as I ran and did the rolling, well, went for the rolling elbow, head up, put her Killed in. professional wrestling. Brother, when I tell you that I talked to Hannah about this, like, I, I we're gonna break the fourth wall. All right. Before the match, I told Hannah, we're doing this. And we, we both were in agreement that we were hitting this move and we were going to light the internet on fire. Boy, did we not know that it would be for that yeah, reason. Yeah, when y'all said it, you were fucking joking, but holy fucking <laughs> shit. Holy crap. We did not. First of all, I didn't know Hannah like was going to do I remember I showed the clip because it looked good. I thought it yeah, looked good. I thought it looked pretty After good. After the match, I showed the clip to someone in the back, Drake King Logan. Shouts out to you, bro. 
And he said, oh, you fucking killed her. Like, he complimented the elbow. He said it looked good. <laughs> and, like, the, the hands up, we laughed at. Me and him, like, oh, she even put her hands up. Like, you fucking went through it. Yeah. Oh, like, she like, protected herself. Somebody cool. else was like, oh, it didn't fucking matter. <laughs> you and that elbow looked good. But I didn't think nothing of it. I posted it, and holy crap, I did not expect what. What happened? Oh, is this where I go into my rant now? Sure. Oh, sure. my what God. Okay. I'm just... I don't know, man. I'm so sick of, like, people on social media preaching, like, po- positivity. Don't live on the internet. But the second, like, anything happens that they even, like, is a slight minor inconvenience to them, they feel the need to comment stupid shit and spout their opinion when no one fucking asked for it. Much like us. We do that a lot. No one fucking asked for this show. We just did it because we thought it'd be funny. But now here we are. So I thought for a segment, we could read some of the comments of this shitty clip that absolutely killed professional wrestling. So, where do you want to start? <laughs> Brother, that's all you. Alright, well, sh- shout out uh, Mark Franchise for calling it the Top Gun Elbow. Shouts out to you. Uh, then we got... I'm not going to say their name. I'm just going to read the comment. It said, damn, man, I thought that looked snug from where I was sitting, comma. And how are y'all going to give someone shit for protecting themselves? What happened to the art of the business? And then someone replied with, if you can't take a forearm, maybe you in the wrong sport. Feel unsafe? Say no, I'm not uncomfortable. Or I'm not comfortable with that. So, <clears throat> so like, I didn't think nothing was wrong with it, but uh, somewhere in there... Someone said, um, well, okay, when I say I don't think it was nothing wrong with it, the thing is, is putting your hands up like that, mm-hmm. I think someone even said, you could have just ducked. Because at that point, you know it's coming, just duck, yeah. so you don't get hit with it. And I think someone else said, like, oh, you could have, like, her face didn't look like she was selling, and, like, her body language didn't look like she was selling, and she just put her hands up. So she could have, because she just got hit with a move, she could have been like this, and actually just took it. But, on another note, it's an elbow, it's not actually hitting her in the head. Yeah, and it's something so, like, fucking incredibly small. Like, I get it. I get it. Would I have covered up? No. I've taken that move a million times from you, and, you know, it's felt good the entire time. Also, another thing I don't like is certain people pushing the narrative that Hannah knew that she was going to get shot on. Fun fact. Me and Zell, for, like, the first four months of my wrestling career, did not like each other. And we wrestled each other, what, like, fucking seven times in, like, two months? A lot months? of times. He never shot on me once. At all. Bro, if I did, it probably wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I'm just hey, joking. I'm just saying, like, shit, what makes y'all think Zell would fucking pick this moment to be like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot on somebody? I don't dislike Hannah. But... I, like, it's, it's weird, man. Like, I'm... I know that whole situation happened. I'm not going to fucking touch that. But, you know, look, she ain't beat me up. Gosh. Cut that. Cut that. (laughs) For shoot, cut that. (laughs) Cut that. Cut that. We got to find another way to end this segment. I just... (laughs) Bro, no, we're not cutting anything. That's fine. All right. Also, Trey Miguel... Trey Miguel even said it best either. Trey Miguel commented. I was pleasantly surprised. The amount of cornballs coming for these kids is crazy. Both are super young and green. I forgot how many of you are UAW Hall legends. Which, great fucking point. I mean, I was just happy that he got a lot of views. They were real views. I was just happy I wasn't fucking involved. This is the first time I'm able to look at some shit that someone else is involved in and be like, oh, cool. Bro, it's like, it's so crazy because I like, you just post a clip that you think is good. Well, (laughs) you know something so funny? This happened today at work. I didn't even tell you this. This happened today at work. Someone came up to me and was like, what was up with that that elbow you pulled? What people were tripping about that? He's not a wrestling fan. He wrestled. He just he looked at the. I didn't know he knew about all this. He's like, man, they were tripping out. Were they really tripping out on that girl? And another person said, wait, what happened? And he was like, he elbowed some chick in the head, and everybody was tripping out about it. And he's like, what? I'm like, bro, you got to give some context to that. And he's like, he's like, be that's what you did. Yeah, he beat the fuck out of her on live. I would like to highlight another comment that okay. said, Wish.com Ruby Riot didn't want to tell. <laughs> First off, 
You ain't shit for comedy, man. <laughs> because, look, <laughs> I'm not going to laugh because... <laughs> I will. That was funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be, like, a good person here. You know? I mean, it's I, funny. That I mean, it joke. is funny. It's a, it's Bro, a good Bro, people joke. call me all types of stuff in the ring. Oh, people yeah. call you stuff people in the ring. People call me all types of... But remember, we funny. can't have opinions, though. We can't have a big, specifically us. As we sit in this podcast. Yeah, that we we have shirts. Oh, which, yeah. by the way, I got uh, dress coded at Horror Slam. Shouts out to <laughs> the person who dress coded me. I didn't know that there was attire like rules at a deathmatch show. Oh. So thanks. Oh, God. Thank you for that. Um, But... Uh, is that is that it for that elbow? Oh, should I just tell the full TJ elbow story of how this whole move started? Yes. All right, let's let's, uh, let's go down story time. How much time we got? We got to stick within our time, brother. Well, LJ told us go third. I mean, we got a good like ten, maybe. What what are we at? Uh, I think. We're at like eleven thirty. God damn, we're supposed to have like five minutes left. It's supposed to be fifteen minutes. By brother. the way, fun fact: this is exactly how conversations with me and Zogo go in the ring when we're in rest holds. <laughs> we're just trying to figure shit out. Anyway, uh, so I was at an IPW show, and it was right after I wrestled, out. I wrestled. Maybe I don't know. Oh yeah, it was. It was right after I wrestled Adam Wick at Pro Wrestling All Stars, and I remember Adam. Shouts out to Adam. Shouts out to everybody that ever helped me. Like came up with mood for me to do that I liked. So he uh, he wanted me to do an enziguri. And I was like, I can't do that. He's like, bitch, yes you can. <laughs> he showed me how to do an enziguri on the on the um, rope while they're on while he's on the top rope. And I thought, oh, that looked good. It'd be cool to do this while they're in the corner. But I wanted to stack it with something because I don't want to just hit that and pin them. So I'm going to, like, grab them on the neck and, like, roll them and have them be on their knees. And I'm like, what move can I hit from right there? What move just makes total sense? And in my head, I was like, for my character and the way I wrestle, the move that makes the most sense is a rolling elbow. A rolling elbow that he just spent the last five months establishing, by the way. But I said, that's TJ's finisher. And I yeah. know he's going to get mad if I do that. I know he's going to get mad if I hit that move. So I was like, I'm not hitting that. In my head, this all went on in my head. And it was before the show. So I went around to people, yep. vets, and asked them, hey, I want to do a move while they're on their knees in the middle of the ring. What should I do? And I remember, bro, I, I, okay. we, can, we can say their names. Because I'll say like Solo's us. name because he, he was one that wasn't a vet. I asked him, and he, without hesitation, he said, Roll that one. And there were other people. I'm not going to say their names. There's like four vets. I will. All said roll an elbow. My father, LJ Lawrence, was one of those He was one of them. Derek Wolf Wolf, Wolf was one of them. Terry Von Avery. Oh, I'm not going to name anymore. But anyway, they all said it, right? (laughs) just listed like every name. So they all said it. And I was like, nope, don't want to hit that. What's the next person? Nope, don't want to hit that. And then eventually, like... You know, LJ was, like, trying to teach me how to do this Kinshasa move. It was a Kinshasa. And it was, like, before the show, and we didn't really have much time. And he's like, nope. Like, I was getting it wrong, which you do when you're learning something new. So, he's, so then Derek Wolf was like, why don't you want to hit the elbow? So then I told them why, and they just were like, it was a group of people. And they were just like, they were so disappointed. <laughs> they were, like, laughing. They're like, which well, fuck y'all, because we could have been good, like, little drama-free, you know, spot monkeys. But I no. knew it was going to cause drama, and I told them that. And they were like, well, maybe I should fucking call Edge and ask, can I do a spear? Well, <laughs> Top Gun, make sure you call Eddie Guerrero for that frog splash. Well, LJ, call Shawn Michaels. Should I just never fucking hit a forearm? And put it? Like, they were going off. Clowning, and eventually, because I kept saying like, no, like it's gonna cause drama. I know TJ. I know that he's not gonna like it. And eventually, I was like, all right, well, I'm not a bitch. I don't care. I'm gonna do it. But once he sends me, once he get, I get that DM. I'm screenshotting it. And I'm sending it to all of y'all. And then it happened, right? Yeah. And I posted it. And I'm not kidding. And I might still have the screenshot. Four minutes mm-hmm. after that post got posted. Four minutes, he commented on it. What did it say? That looks familiar. (laughs) 
<laughs> nothing else. So Which, now, by the way, cold ass response. Every cold single as fuck. time. So now we have this running joke that every single time, if anyone's watched a wrestling match with me, whenever someone hits an elbow, I always say, that looks familiar <laughs> every time. Michael Elgin, one time, it's not his horror slam match, did literally so many elbows. He did the neck breaker elbow, rolling elbow. He even did the copyright strike. <laughs> Just, I was like, fuck Michael Elgin watches a lot of my matches. <laughs> As a joke, obviously. But yes. that's the story of the TJ elbow. That's what happened. Yeah. And it caused a lot of drama. Like, But shouts out to Alex Weir because he was like one of the first people to message me after that. But we'll get into that. Shout out Adam Wick too. He went on a podcast and... Oh, yeah, he went on a, like, we have people defending us. We yeah. definitely have people defending us. Because believe it or not, we don't seek drama out. Like, I know, <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, right? These two fuckers sitting here with killing the Bills <laughs> t-shirts with a goddamn podcast are talking about how they don't like drama, but, like, genuinely, we don't create the drama. It just happens, and then it involves us. And we weren't the only people with drama this week. Yeah. Like we said, it was a busy week. Busy so, week. Chase Burnett. Who the fuck is Matt Breeding? <laughs> Uncle Chase just out of Bro. nowhere decided to just shit on Matt Breeding for no reason. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. So I, saw, funny. I saw that post and I said, I'm too sober for this. I got to go smoke. Oh my God. It was so random. It was like. What was what was the main point of the post? I don't know. That he doesn't exist? <laughs> I've had a match with him, so I know that he does exist. <laughs> Fun fact, he hit me with a catching spine buster that was cool as fuck. Play that clip, because <laughs> this podcast is going to get a lot of views. Play the clip. <laughs> Play it again. Cause it was Shouts nice. out to Uncle Chase, though. He's a big supporter of the podcast. He is a big supporter of us. And I like, I like him a lot. He's... That's not, it's weird, man. Like Some people don't like us. Like, the people that like us is like contradicting because it's like we have people that don't like each other and they're <laughs> beefing with each other, but then they'll text us and be like, "Yo, good shit." So Love basically, what you're, you're talking about Chase and Alex. Got it. I all was right. not saying that <laughs> at all. That's so, what you said. Okay, but um, yeah, um. It was funny. That post was funny, Chase. Uh, I wish it was a work. I wish that was a work. I wish they were leading to a match, but I don't know. Chase was just on one. What were you on, Chase? I feel like Chase is almost always on one. <laughs> Chase, on. Chase, whenever he opens up social media, is always on a go. All right, he's like, I 100%. talk my shit. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck. Always on 100 from the second he picks up his phone to the second he puts it down. Yes. yes. Shouts out to y'all. Which Chase. I can appreciate the pettiness. I can appreciate the pettiness, too. Now that we buried half of Michigan. No, we didn't. First of all, I can't We I can't bury anyone. That's fair. And I was told that I'd get buried, so. So, now that we're done with the petty pit stop, let's... Put somebody over, brother. Let's <laughs> put somebody. And I want you to go first because I'm really interested to see who you're going to put over. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, so I want to put... This is only our third time putting somebody over. And I'm already doing a repeat because I, I literally have to put him over. I, I literally have to. I, I thought about putting someone else over, but I was like, nope. I just... I, I have to talk about this person. Put him over because he deserves it. My boy, Alex... Weird. Come on the show. Hey, I just gotta say, I was going to some shows since the last um, show that we did, and I, I found out that he was taking a break from wrestling, which is fine. Like people take breaks, right? Then as I was going to shows, like I kept realizing, like they would make an announcement, like, "Hey, Alex Weir is not here tonight. Unfortunately, uh, he must drop the time." And when I found out he was taking a break, I messaged him, made sure he was all right. He said, "Yeah." Like I'm not gonna say what he said, but he he let me know that he was all right. He wasn't down or bad. But I was going to these shows, and they just kept on like announcing that he was like this title is now vacant because Alex Weir, like we sent him, you know. Whatever he's going through, we send him positive vibes or whatever. And I was like, God damn, Alex dropped a lot of titles. Like, he, he walked out on a lot of titles for him to take this break. So I was like, I really hope he's all right. Even though he told me he was all right, I don't know. So, like, 
and he just he helped me out. Like I said, when that first T.J. Obo video came out, he was the first person to message me, very first person. And like he sent a voice message and was like, "Hey, this, this, that, and this." And he always, always had my back. Every time some drama came up, he's like, "Hey, look, you and your boy, this, this, that, and this." <laughs> At shows, he's like, "Yep, I was, I was killing the business like four years ago." So hey, this, this, that, and this. Uh, he just always had my back, so I just have to put him over. I cannot wait till you return and you're back inside the locker rooms with us. Yes. Damn, that was all nice and eloquent and shit. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out who I want to put over. Damn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, okay. Uh, oh, I got it. All right. And now, I will put over my dad, my father, the guy who's been whooping my ass for about my entire life. Gotta put over big LJ Lawrence. It's about time you put him over. I was like, fuck. And it's been like three episodes. It's right. top Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Wait, is the thing on? Yeah, it's on. I oh, it's on? Like, okay. I don't feel like changing. Just go ahead with your put him over. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So today, I'm going to put over a man that has whooped my ass for like 10 consecutive years. Ever since I was a little, little lad. Still killing wrestling back then. My dad, my father, the greatest karate master of all time, L.J. Lawrence, leader of the Cobra Kai Dojo. I thought you were putting over Alex Weir again. I'm sorry. I didn't put over Alex Weir. <laughs> you put over Alex Weir. I'm joking. This is, that was a joke because they do karate. You know, L.J. Oh, yeah. L.J. is going to watch this. So that was a joke. He might watch this. I He's don't know if he watches it. our stuff. Oh, he does. Yeah, man. The first guy to really, like, give me a chance and allow me to shine. He's given me... Countless advice, been on so many car rides. I still love all those standish car rides, all the great advice he's given me. Shouts out to LJ Lawrence. And thank you for giving me the super kick. I'm going to hit it ten times a match when I return, and I'm going to kill that fucking finish completely. So thank you for that. Too late. <laughs> oh, yeah, too late. I already killed it. My bad. That's to right. To some people. Yeah, to some people. Hit two of them, and all of a sudden... That's it. That's it. And that was this shit show of a podcast. Um... This might be the last one, depending on how y'all feel. We could get canceled, potentially, because of this one. But, you know, we didn't cause this drama. Y'all did. So, just remember, blame yourselves. <laughs> Alright, guys. Make sure you leave the video a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, catch you later.